I am unashamed. What about you? So we're displaced uh, still <laughs> from Hurricane Delta. Is, was this one? And uh, y'all were displaced when Zach was here, right? Earlier, like yeah. last time he we was went in town. To, uh, Duck, Duck Commander. Commander. Yeah. You're trying to find somewhere with some power. Of course, we got power late last night. So we're at our building uh, at White's Ferry Road. We just kind of took over a, a classroom here. But So if you hear things falling or people shouting, just, you know, it's it, all part it of what, happened. That's what we have. You know, do. when a hurricane hits, which we've had two hit in a month, what, Linda and then Delta. Yeah. Of course, I became a wily veteran after the first one, you know, right. messed up because I, we, we had lived in our house for 13 years, I guess, and never had the electricity go off. So what happened the first time I thought, well, it'd be back on tomorrow. Well, then the next day, then the next day, then the next day. And I was thinking, well, since I haven't opened the refrigerator, it'll probably be okay. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened when that, when those lights went off, I grabbed a Yeti ice chest and because look, I'd already put, I emptied my ice machine into another Yeti ice chest, and I thought, well, I'll have two things of ice. Because last time, this, the first hurricane, ice become the it became the greatest commodity. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'd pay twenty dollars a bag <laughs> if I could get it. And so well, that I, first one too, a lot of the stores were out of power, like convenience stores. Well, right. I mean, so it was not it's as much this time. Every man for himself. <laughs> so. I was ready. That first thing I did, because I didn't have much in there anyway, because from the last time, <laughs> so I had all that packed, and <laughs> which was awesome because the next day Jay's like, you know, one person has power in our family, which is Willie, yep. and Jay assembled, which I'm pretty sure I don't know what the Guinness Book of World Records uh, says about longest <laughs> extension cord <laughs> use, but he said I've got. My freezer and refrigerator going, and I created some space. It's for actually you. Corey's parents, and because they're next door to me, but it's about I know exactly what it is. Because this storm, I was ready. I had bought extra cords, hoping Johnny's power and Willie stayed on, and it did. Because they're on a different grid, <laughs> right? And so they're feeding our houses. Jeremy did his over there. So there's just wires yeah. through our neighborhood. I had 200 feet of extension cord to go to his house, but I went one step further, Jace. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'm gonna be smart this time. So I buy two generators, two grand. A thousand dollars a piece. You can't already find them because well, of right. the first hurricane. So Lisa, so she she starts calling out at Home Depot, and they're like, "Well, we got a truck coming, but we don't know when it's going to get here." So like the day before the hurricane, we keep calling out there because I want to be there when that truck gets there because I know everybody's trying to get the generator. So that finally they said it just got here. So Lisa runs out there. She buys two generators. So we, we get them out. You know, get the wheels on. We're all set up, ready to go. And sure enough, that during the night, no power. So we go out there, me and Jay, I grab that first one, fill it up with gas, put the oil in it, follow the instructions. I pull the cord. Well, that's all of that. What? One pull, the cord won't go back in. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, side, look at this piece of junk. I mean, literally out of the box. Did you read the instructions? Oh, yeah. So, so Jay comes out. The problem is it was made in China, you know, cheap. Crap is what it was. So look, Jay takes the thing off. We can't get it. So that's all right. That's gone. That never even made it to start. Next one, I get out, do the same thing, pull it. It fires up and starts running. I'm saying, all right, pretty good. So it runs one full day, which is enough to run our stuff there between Johnny and that. Mm -hmm. And then about 24 hours in, just parts start falling off of it. The muffler. I'm just literally watching it, and then it just stops. Uh, won't even run. I'm feeling better about not buying one now. I mean, it was, and I guess, I don't know if it's just because, like, you know, there's a lot of generators being sold in this area, so they're just, like, pushing them out. Now we're up to two things, a pandemic that will kill you dead and generators. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. They have right. one thing in common. They're both out of China. China. So here, listen, <laughs> but listen to this, listen to this logic. I was wondering what Phil was talking about. <laughs> I think he was going there. I'm, I'm getting into the Chinese <laughs> Communist Party and their goal is to destroy us. That's and they exactly have a right. lot, they are very creative. They're good at it. So look, so here, listen to this logic. So, so you think, well, okay, Lisa got the warranty on it. So, you know, we just got to take it, get our money back, whatever. You don't want to buy another one of them. So she calls out there and says, uh, you know, two generators out. I need to get these things back there. Oh, no, we, we won't take them back if you put gas in it. Yeah. 
Uh, That's their I've policy. heard other people say that. So, so they, they, you got to call the manufacturer. I think they it. just say that because they don't. Well, work. of course, yeah. because how do you know it doesn't work until you put gas in it? Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of what. So what they're saying is, we're not taking it back here. So then she calls the company, and they're like, "We'll just take it back to the store." And they, she said, "Well, they said they weren't going to take it if it didn't have gas." And they, and they said, "Well, that's stupid. How would you know it didn't work if it didn't?" Have? So uh, that's, that's the I game. The so game. they're so so they're they were in the, the game, they were yeah. back in my truck this morning. I tell you what, that woman's going to go out there, and they're going to give her two thousand dollars to get rid of her. Yeah. Because she's a dog on a bone when, when stuff like this happens. I mean, she well, will see, be relentless. Missy said, why don't we get a generator? I said, babe, we've lived here 13 years. We, that's the first time in the history of Louisiana a hurricane warning was in effect. This is on Linda yeah. for North Louisiana. I mean, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, three well. weeks later, guess what? <laughs> Delta. She was right. Listen to your wife. <laughs> the flaw people. of your argument is it's <laughs> not dumb, knowing man. when the storm will come. That's right. So I'm sitting out here fully prepared, yep. gassed up, yep. that I can run a month, one month, yep. with no power. So we got the old Generac sitting out there yep. automatically controlled from 100 miles away on a computer board. If your electricity goes off, 10 seconds goes by. <laughs> yeah. That's the difference between y'all and me. So well, y'all piecemealing it, you know. You're hiding your money, you know. Okay. You are right. So, I'm, an, I'm an idiot. Bite the well, bullet, pay the money. And you so, say, well, what if one doesn't come until 30 years? I said, well, you're sitting there ready to go when well, it does come. And that was, I admit that, you guys, but now your situation was a little bit different because we grew up out there. There's so many miles and trees between town and you. It's inevitable. Power goes out a lot. You are correct. Well, you're the last person to get it back on. Yeah. You're the correct. But. But I learned that lesson, Dad. You'll be proud of me from dear old Dad. So yesterday I had Danny Boy Bannister over at the house. I said, all right, what do we got to do? Because they do the Generax. He, we, we figure it all out. He said, no, the bad news is, Al, he said, it's, we're backed up four months because of, one, because of coronavirus, because they can't get enough stuff being made. But the other part is everybody's wanting to get one. So I was yeah. like, all right, I'm in line. Put me on the list. Well, That's some- why before... You said, well, what drove you to get that? N- nothing but the realization that storms come of all sorts and power comes and goes. Well, yeah. I lived there long enough to notice every time you had a slight wind living in the woods, trees yeah. would b- go down on the power lines and you're out of luck. So at you first right. I was at the old, you know, the old welding machine. <laughs> you know, I'd yeah. pull it up there, you know, go gas it up every three or four hours. You know, and get by with it. I said, no, we're going, we're going all the way. Yep. You were right. You were right. I noticed a few interesting things that happens because you, you wake up the next morning to the sound of generators. Yep. And chain- all over our neighborhood. And chainsaws. Yes, yeah, right. So I, I ran a chainsaw from daylight to dark because my neighbor got hammered just with huge trees that they can't get out. They're from California. They're already nervous over the first one. I'm pretty sure they're not going to be there long now because they're like, this Louisiana thing is, I mean, I'm just not sure I can take it, brother. Yeah. That's what he said. I said hey. We had one mile from my yard. We had just under a mile of one tree after the other, big trees like these. Yeah. Just coming across the road, taking the wires. You had with four them. right across the road, at least. Oh yeah, yeah. one in the yard. It, <laughs> it, if it had fallen any other direction, it would have torn wires loose there. But th- yeah. that one happened to fall. I said, well, it didn't take down but one line, and I'm looking out the door over there at it, drinking coffee. But but then when I closely inspected it, it was a vine. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I come over, I said, whew, I looked and I said, no, the line's still there. That's a, that's an old running vine up the tree. So I told my neighbor, I said, let's give it a couple of weeks till the land tightens up after the 16th rain yeah. so I don't tear your yard up. It was right on the edge of the property line. It fell on me, not him. If it had fallen the other way, it would have just crushed his whole house. Oh, well, yeah. it's good for your faith here because you realize that we're perishable. You're, you're yeah. reminded. So maybe we need that. And it's great to act out love your neighbor. I, I, that has crossed my mind the last three days. You will be labeled as paranoid, but you remind them just preparedness. Yeah. yeah. Just preparedness. Well, I, there, there's a crew from our church that, I mean, as soon as this happens, 
they all suit up, get the chainsaws, get the, and just take off to neighborhoods and just start. Hey, do you need help? They look yeah. for elderly people, especially. Yep. I mean, that's it. Really, is a great opportunity to be Jesus. Yeah, right? I had a couple of funny stories that happened in the last few days. I thought y'all would enjoy. One, I followed around an ice truck for a few blocks. <laughs> Because instead of just going to the was store. Was that when I saw you at the store? When you, that's it. Uh, you saw that ice truck? I saw the ice I truck. I followed that ice truck because I'm like, <laughs> forget going to a store. Because the last time the hurricane hit, it took me like eight tries before somebody had some ice. Oh, yeah. And I found it that old Super One. They had ice. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, I'm fixed to buy all that ice. She <laughs> said, sir, you can only buy two bags. <laughs> Think of your neighbor. Ice I hoarder. Said, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I followed that ice truck because I said, I'm going to make a little side deal. But once they pulled up, it was fine. So I bought the two bags. That was, the other thing, when I got all my food in the refrigerator and freezer, I felt like an expert. Here's the problem. Well, now I have no food. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have an empty. <laughs> so, so Missy's like, well, just go. You know, there's a Mexican restaurant. Still where's that? We just get some chips and salsa. And we can eat on that for a couple of days because I love, you know, their chips and, and the cheese sauce. The queso, you know? yeah. So I was like, okay. I said, like, great idea, babe. Where's it at? She's telling where it at. She's like, oh, the woman that works there, she's a fan of the show. You'll love her. I was like, oh, great. Because she knows I feel uncomfortable going to restaurants. But, you know, when you have a hurricane, if they if a restaurant has power, because you see the lines. You don't, the drive throughs oh. up here, Phil, because I know you don't know about this. No. You, you're waiting. Around the third, block. Yeah, yeah you're waiting. ridiculous. See, she said, I'm pretty sure that, you know, whatever time she sent me it's to the It's been ma- more years than I can count where I went through a drive through. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I don't I don't I don't get Dad in said, that. They, I'm with they, have, I never entered that zone. Dad said they I, have drive throughs <laughs> I'm with you. So look, I pull up to the Mexican restaurant and it was pretty busy cuz cuz yep. everybody's eating out because we have a hurricane. Right. There, Which gives a little credence to we don't have to cook anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to cook anymore. <laughs> so maybe so. That, you can so, only ride that horse so far. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I walk in and go up to the counter. Well, it was, wasn't a woman. She said there was a woman going to be there. It was a man, and uh, which I didn't think it would be a problem. But I was like, I want two bags of chips and a big thing of cheese sauce. I didn't know the jargon, you know, <laughs> cheese, and, and throw in a little cup of salsa. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. And so he that didn't say okay. Un, that comes under the heading of suburban living. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, see. So I thought, okay, he may not speak English, which is great because I thought this is authentic Mexican food here. So he leaves, but it was, it was like for a while. And I thought, huh. Well, he came back, no chips and, and salsa yet, and he starts ringing it up. But I could tell he was having problems. Well, it, it, this went on for about five minutes. He's trying to push buttons, and he's getting frustrated. And I said, how about $10? <laughs> and he kind of looked perplexed. And now, I didn't know what it cost, but I just threw a number out there. And I thought, if it's under $10, you can keep it. If it's over, you know what, it's chips and salsa. <laughs> and he was like, no, I got nothing. But he was speaking Spanish, so whatever he was saying, <laughs> Boy, you can tell when times are hard because we're after the c- couple of bags of chips and some salsa. Oh, this story. And Jace is negotiating. This, this story it, gets better because I, I didn't want to wait. Jace, you wouldn't have done well in about 1650. So, so, so hang on, let's take a break. So one of our uh, sponsors that is, boy, are they on time with what they do, is uh, My Patriot Supply. Uh, we've been talking about not having food, not having power. You know, Dad talked about preparedness. I mean, what happens, right? We, we've been going through this with two hurricanes that have hit. So these guys are, I'm definitely glad that they're around because what they do is they have basically a four-week supply of emergency food. And we've got some of their big tubs that have things in there. Basically, just add water and you can eat, uh, which is very important. We, we found out the need to, yeah. when the grocery stores, you know, don't have what you need or they're out of power. So these last 25 years in storage, which is amazing. So, I mean, you can prepare for a pretty good while with these guys. The way you get it is you go to MyPatriotSupply.com. That's all one, MyPatriotSupply.com. Uh, and they're going to find out uh, what you can do to get yourself stocked up. And I mean, 
we certainly need it around here with everything that's been going yeah. on with us. Yeah, it would came in handy, I can tell you that. Check them out. So he's like, See, uh, uh, whatever in Spanish means I got it. And he said, $82.30. <laughs> For the chips I, and the salsa. I said, nope. <laughs> Without hesitation, there were other people around. I went, nope. I looked at them, and they kind of smiled. And he's like, no, 82. I said, oh, I heard you. <laughs> nope. Some, the, the buttons didn't match up because I know two chips. And, he, and he's looking like, and so then I thought, here it is, the moment I've been waiting for. I said, let me put this in Spanish for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought he would laugh because I said that on Duck Dynasty one right, time. Right, right, right. He was looking at me. Yeah, because we he did said, an episode in, uh, yeah. in the Mexican He said, $82. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so... I said, go find someone. <laughs> I said, I'll give you ten dollars. I said, I'll give you twenty, but I'm not giving you eighty-two dollars. <laughs> so he leaves. A woman comes back. Well, this is the woman. She pushes three buttons and she says, ten dollars and eighty cents. You were like the price is right. You like I got, was close. Now I was a little lower, you know. So I hand her a twenty. And she's looking around. I was like, oh, we have another, another problem. And she said, I have no ones. I was like, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> she said, I tell you what, she gave me $10. Because I'm like, I'm not tipping you. Because one, number one, I've been here 20 minutes. It's <laughs> not, not saying much for adding, multiply, adding, dividing, multiplying, dividing. It's not saying much for the human race as far as a little math goes. Well, that's what happens. Well, the math was fine. She didn't have any ones. So she gave me $10. And then I looked at the guy and I was like, see, it was $10. <laughs> and he's, he was looking bewildered. And I was like, okay, I'm out of here. What we have here is a so, failure to communicate. If you're wondering why I don't go to restaurants, that's why. Yep. Right there. And I don't know if you can help me with that. I just thought you would appreciate that story. <laughs> that that's one of the, the pains of when you go out, you you lose control of the situation. And to me that was frustrating. Right. I found this <clears throat> for us it was the the things I take for granted with power. I mean, when you don't have electricity I mean, first of all, I flipped the light on fifty times in three days, just kept walking in, flipping I do the, the same thing. It's like and, and it's just like, oh, what an idiot. But for me, it was like my electric toothbrush that I have a little water reservoir with it because it flosses your teeth with water at the same time you're brushing your teeth. It's awesome. And so, like, after two days, I was like, man, I've got to run an extension cord back here. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, so I ran little, an extension cord to plug in uh, my electric To shoot a little <laughs> hole in you two young bucks thinking. Uh, We're not so young. If you anymore. get into a practice... And America has fallen victim to it, whereby they think that power will always be there, fresh water will always be there, uh, it, it, the groceries will always be there. You're, you're correct. And you become uh, suburbanized, right. where you think, what in the world? The, li the lights won't come on. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, oh, the, you, the reality of life is you better have plenty of stores in place where you can last a few months before you turn to actually bringing meat out of the water and out of the woods, that, that's phase two, oh, yeah. where you don't have anything to eat. It's all gone. Oh, you're right. <clears throat> I'll, be, be, well, I'll be prepared. I just say no If worries. we have a reboot. No worries. We, we're, I feel like I can turn it back to my raisin, but you're right. It'll be a, it'll be a painful journey for most. That first morning of the hurricane, Lisa comes in and she's like, we can't get, we, I, I need coffee. I mean, like, I'm yeah. like, babe, it's still raining outside. Like, you know, it's a hurricane. So I'm out there in the rain trying to get some power so she can get coffee because yeah. you got to have a coffee pot. With We're operating coffee. down there, you know, down down 20 miles south of the, of the hustle and bustle. But we're operating with a fixed system that is very redundant. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Groceries, ice. You're like, we're still making ice. I mean, all it takes is power. But you say, well, what if your power source leaves? I said, we have a backup. So you yeah. got to, these days, it's best to roll with a backup system on well, I, everything. Well, it's like me, I have a gas stove, so I heat the water. I just have a pitcher, I put a filter in it, 
That's I, mean, why I made me a coffee. Well, I had gas interesting stove point. And a gas water that's heater, why so I, we had hot water too. That's why, Jace, you you said it right. Don't depend on all electric. Yeah, that's the well, suburban you need thinking. Gas in there. You say you need gas. You need you need a a sizable container right there that'll keep you going for a month or two or three. So well, you're still on propane because you're so far out. But Jason and I, we have natural gas. So, I mean, mm-hmm. we're not running out, you know, uh, of gas, which is a good thing. Yeah, it is nice to have that stove, which is what I lived on. And it was nice to have my wife there this time. And when I got home, that woman had 75 candles. When I walked out, I felt like I was in some Roman cathedral <laughs> back in 1500. Did you have, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. And I you said, know, I have propane <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> bottles that are like this, some of them are like huge, but you run out of those, and I have a, a fleet of ones that are about four and a half foot tall. Then you come down to the, the stubby ones that you can go, you know, two <laughs> days stubby. on, three days. Yeah. So I'm just saying, we, propane, we plenty of propane. Well, I, I told her, I said, don't take this the wrong way, but where did all these candles come from? What are you, a closet <laughs> candle hoarder? She's like, you know, I just didn't realize over the years how many candles I had bought and never used. The same thing in my house. Before. In the suburban world, uh, Tom, I, I don't know whether it was uh, Shakespeare or one of them back in the back, a situation <laughs> becomes a crisis when cattle or women stampede. So don't forget I've that. I've heard because you say that before, but I don't think Shakespeare you said that. Well, I don't know who said it, but, but it was true. But all I'm saying is... Oh, I saw I noticed it. That, that females. I saw it that I, I love them, but you say they do, when, they, they, when the power goes out oh, yeah. and the water goes off oh, yeah. and the plumbing stack stops no up. Doubt. Uh, he, oh, Lisa had a look in her eyes, and then she looked at me. I, was, I thought, I'm going to have to get this woman some coffee because she's like, I'm going to Alabama because we have a place down there. I mean, I, you're going to drive seven hours for coffee? I was like, just, I have just, two I little know. words that I remind your mother of often. You know, she gets about 70 something, you know, women that get a little excited over there. Oh, the power. Go ahead. I said, I got two words I always say calm, calm down. down. Yeah. Calm down. I said the same I, thing. Hey, Missy me. was fantastic. She she lit the place up. We you know. I well, mean, our problem was this thing hit. We got no power for three days, and we had all of my youngest grandkids because Alex and Vinny were out of town. Now that put a lot of pr- more pressure. You take a two, three year old, a four year old, and a six year old. And thrust them into this. Wow, mix. that's where you think about up. this. That's where you should have had to come to Jesus meeting on that. Well, it was bad Look, for her. In the yeah. major cities of any country, but just go with America. You say major cities, high rise buildings, yep. full of apartment little little apartment complexes. Thou tens of thousands are in these buildings. Right. Just think about how dependent they are. On you water, lose power. on power, yep. and you say it's that, and they're operating as if nothing's ever going to happen. Right. We'll just take that mindset from where I my my view. I'm down here in the middle of the woods. You're like, which is better? Well, survival comes tough if you got a little apartment somewhere, <clears throat> and the power leaves you, and you're sitting there. You're like, hmm, let's see here now. So I'm just saying. Life is itself, us being mortal, it's a, it's a risk. Oh, yeah. But Just you, from day to day, you never know. That's right. You think about Jesus, though, the way he operated. He basically operated like a hurricane had just hit his entire life. That's right. He, that's correct. You, you remember when they came up and they said, it was Matthew 8, when they said, hey, we'll follow you wherever you go. And he said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. See, when you think about it, he basically just roamed around. He was saying the foxes and the birds live better. <laughs> he didn't say squirrels, because you know what I did notice from this last hurricane? A lot of dead squirrels. Yeah, I noticed that. Because when the trees fall, the squirrels died. I, the first thing I saw, we have this new little dog who's turned into Hazel's best buddy. You know, his name's Buddy. He... When I looked outside, he was carrying half of a dead squirrel. And I was like, no, <laughs> don't bring that in here. I said, you find that in about a week. But when I was sawing up those trees for my neighbor, I, we just kept finding dead squirrels. And yeah, I was like, everywhere. boy, it's bad to be a squirrel. But you do think about that. Jesus didn't put his faith and trust in the amenities of life. His, his now, you in- brought up an interesting point hang here. On, hang on, Dad, before we do that, let's take another break. 
So another one of our sponsors that is looking to protect, you know, from this cyber crime uh, that we talk about quite a bit uh, is, a, is a company called Express VPN. And so basically what happens here is more about stealing your data, your information, where you go, if you go to a website quite a bit, and they're, they're always trying to take that data, steal it, and then hit you with all these ads and all these different things on your computer, which hmm. they shouldn't do. So it's hard to be able to protect yourself unless you have one of these virtual private networks. So that's what ExpressVPN does. Easy to use steps uh, that basically can protect that, make sure people can't know where you're going, get your data, all this information. Less than $7 a month, and you get all the protection that you need. Um, so anyway, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee as well. So uh, this is how you protect your online activity. Go to expressvpn.com slash fill, and they're going to give you three months free. So it's expressvpn.com slash fill. Three months free, one-year package. Check them out. Here's the interesting point. I'm, I'm giving you three impossibles where the Bible speaks of something that's impossible. The first one, Jesus said, uh, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, which is incredible uh, uh, <laughs> words, than a, man, than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He said, well, if you're rich, it's, it's tough to get there. Well, when the disciples heard that, they said, well, who then can be saved? If it's that difficult, who, who can be saved? I mean, almost impossible. I mean, well, this is a yeah. honey, I shrunk the camel. Yeah. To get so it Jesus the looked at them and he said, with man, so you look at man-made governments, Al, no matter what they say, if you get so dependent on them that you actually think they are the ones who can save you, Jesus makes an interesting point. With man, this is impossible. Who then can be saved? He said, well, with mankind, never forget this. They can't save you. They can't give you immortality. They just can't do it. It's not within them to do it. Far, they're just humans. They're mortal, everlasting, whatever. And they can't even help you, Dad, in mortality. These people now, they're dependent on the government to take care of them. They're like, we need more. We don't have oh, enough. Yeah. They can't take care of you. They That's can't the take point. care of you. So with man, it's impossible when it comes to salvation. But with God, all things are possible. That's one. The second one is that uh, at Acts, where is it? Acts uh, 2, when Jesus... Oh, I like this verse. When, when, yeah. the, when uh, uh, Luke was writing it down... He said it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. When yeah, when Jesus, Jesus was dead, yeah, they buried him. He said, Peter was preaching. He said it's impo it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. It's one of the most interesting phrases in the It entire really Bible. is. Right. And you look at that, you say, hmm, this one here, the, the reason we say our faith, we pray for governments. We try to elect godly men knowing at the end of the day, they can't remove your sin. They can't free you from Satan. They can't free you from guilt. They can't free you from law. They can't free you from the grave. They just can't do it. You say, hmm, well, why should I be so dependent on them? You shouldn't be. Right. They can't. They can't. It's impossible. Right. Well, and when it comes to death, you say, yep. And the last one is that Hebrews where it says, I love this one. All these writings we have here, we read them and we say, boy, it's like, like food for thought. When the Hebrew writer was talking, he said, it's impossible for God to lie. If you take a being where it's impossible for him to tell you a lie, and you mix that with the <clears throat> verses I've already read, you say, you better put your faith in him, because with him, all things are possible. You can get out of here alive with him. Right. He'll take care of you while you're there. He'll protect you when the storms come. He, he's there 24-7, ready to help you. He's immortal. He'll make you like him, mm -hmm. immortal. So you get to add it all up, and you say, you know what? These man-made governments, say what you will, Al. You can't be too dependent on them. That's right. Don't depend on them yeah. because they'll, 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 they'll let you down. 
over and over and over and over. We've got a group of individuals that think it's all going to end on whoever's running the country, whether they're Democrat or Republican. But we look at it like, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's bad either way. We'll just go with the most godly ones, knowing that uh, many mistakes would be made and many missed calls and man being fallible. He's not like God, that's for sure. Well, it's interesting. <clears throat> that's the difference between Jesus' politics that I wrote a book on right. and just depending on some kind of man-made government structure. Well, it's interesting because if you flip that around <clears throat> to your point and you start with lies, which was from your other book, you know, The Father of Lies, because yep. Satan can't speak truth. So the father of lies. So first it was the theft of America, right. so the evil one. And now it's the uh, how to win back the soul of America right. from the evil one. Right. Well, first of all, but don't be dependent on human governments to solve your problem. They can try their best, but so I've seen this play out in the in the pandemic. There's been a lot of lying going on, unbelievable amount of lying. And what it's created is this fear of death that we all know is ridiculous because the numbers are so tiny percentage-wise for people. They are scared to death because they're mortal. They don't have faith in God, and it's impossible for him to lie when he said, I will save you, and that's they're right. like, ah, I don't. That's why their ultimate answer was <coughs> we put our salvation in a mask. A mask. That's I'm right. like, well, I put my salvation yeah. in Jesus. I'll wear a mask. We'll stop it spreading, but my salvation is not in that. I'm not a physician or an epidemiologist, but, but a piece of cloth I don't care if it's over your eyeballs and your nose and your mouth. And that's going to take out a microscopic microbe <laughs> of which you have to have a, a, a device, a microscope to find it. <laughs> like but that was, little piece yeah. of cloth is just going to strain her right out. I'm like, I don't think so. Uh, no. And, but, and then the point is, to your first point, therefore... What they're saying is what you're saying. We can save you. We, if you'll yeah. just stay home and if you just won't talk to anybody, if you'll just wear a mask for months and on end, the we mask can save will you. solve our problem. We All can we save need you. is the mask. We get the mask. I said, you need to go up, up, up higher than that. You need to say, ultimately, it's going to be up to the God of heaven who can save you. Forget about the mask. That's, and what I thought was really just turned out to be amazing. Of course, it's been twisted all around. But so I mean, it's like 99.9%. So they, they were back and forth. Every time you see Biden, he wears the mask to bed, I guess, because every time you see he's got the mask. Trump, you know, has obviously said, well, wear the, like kind of what you said, Jay, yeah. just wear the mask, whatever. Then Trump gets COVID, and three days later, he's back. I mean, he, he's 74 years old. You hear all the, oh, they're in the high risk. And, yeah. and Trump's just rolling like a train. And he's like, a lot of them said he's faking it. He never had it to start with. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I said, well, I thought two weeks ago, a week ago, y'all were saying he's the one, he is the pandemic. Right. I, mean, <laughs> I just thought that, but to your point, I, I see that so illustrated so well, and it could be anything else. It could be, but it always starts with the lion. You know, it's always the line for power or for whatever. These people just want to be in power, and they'll use a virus. They'll use anything to, to, for a power grab, and that's what this is about. I mean, it's just put us in power, and we'll take care of you. But it's, that's a lie. See, a lot of them don't know that. See right here? See, I've got this right here. <laughs> right here. See right here? You say, well. Phil, you've done this. Yeah, you <laughs> say, in case somebody comes up and says, you know, what, what are you doing? You don't have a match. I said, hey, check this out right here. <laughs> I got it up. <laughs> and once I bring this piece of cloth down, all <laughs> microbes are destroyed. Instantaneous. I'd love to know the microbes that are living in that thing right now from just being around. Think about it. <laughs> Let's take another break. So uh, one of the things we've talked about a lot with the increase uh, in uh, computer use because of uh, COVID and so many people working at home, Zoom calls. I mean, Jace, you've done a lot of Zoom I do speeches at least and, once a week. Yeah, and I've do done quite a, few, yeah. quite a bit of that myself. And Dad's all the Zoom interviews. So more people online, which means that it brings out the cyber thieves because more people are at risk. That's the way this works. The more you're plugged into the system, these thieves, these hackers, they come in and they steal stuff, a lot of stuff from people. One of the unfortunate things that they steal from some people is their home, your home title because it's digitalized 
somewhere in cyberspace. If they get their hands on it, they basically take your house without you knowing that they got it. It's really sad. It's happened to a lot of people. Um, so we got a company, HomeTitleLock.com, um, that will can block that and keep that from happening. And so basically what you do is you go to HomeTitleLock.com and you use the code RADIO. You get 30 days of free protection. Uh, they'll register you, make sure your home is, is still yours. So check these guys out, HomeTitleLock.com, code RADIO. But it helps your immune system, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody said, did you get around to buying a mask yet? I said, not yet. <laughs> you have your own. I brought up that story when he, Jesus said he didn't have a place to lay his head because he didn't. He didn't use material possessions while he was here, which tells you don't go into full-blown panic when you can't use your amenities in life. Right. I mean, he, we got our faith in Jesus. He didn't need them. But then that next disciple said, well, Lord, first let me go back and, and bury my father because he brought up something like, this is serious. We have a person, you know, my dad that died, so I, I'm going to follow you. Of course, this is Jesus telling the story because it makes us uncomfortable to do this because what will we say? If, I'd, I'd say, oh, oh well, sure. of course. Yeah, I, we have to respect. And Jesus says, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead, which seems like he was not being com compassionate, but he was basically saying, there's nothing you can do there. Yeah, It's over. Look at the government officials <clears throat> when it came down to the national anthem, land of the free, home of the brave and land of the free. Well, as soon as a pandemic comes and the microbes start making people sick, all of a sudden, we're not the land of the free anymore. That's right. There's more government edicts coming from these governors. Mm -hmm. They're just one after the other after the other. Shut it all down. They're running, they just running scared all the time. Uh, Man-made governments cannot set people free from the things that matter. Satan, sin, guilt, law, and the grave. They can't do it now. Right. Those are the things that matter. Number two, governments, uh, man-made governments cannot dispense immortality. They just don't have the power to do it. On that score, they're out. And finally, governments can't endow people with these qualities. You say, well, can, you know, we, we rely on the government. What can the United States, what kind of qualities can they give me? They can't give you love, joy. Not real love, joy, peace, patience. Well, we're not with war right now, but the spiritual war continues. You say you have the evil one, spiritual warfare. So they can't give you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. The reason you don't see more love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, you say you don't get that from a man-made government. That's right. No. no. <clears throat> you only get it from God. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Uh, even our constitutional republic can't give you those qualities. They only come from God. And if you get that mixed up, Al, you'll find yourself running scared the rest of your life on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So the little girls who were carrying the sign were going to hell and were proud. Uh, that pretty well sums it up for the for where the human race is, even yeah. in these United States of America. I, the government can't save you. Because I, I think it's a different definition of peace. We think, well, yeah, they can give us peace and they, they can make us safe. But when you're thinking of true peace, they can't give you forgiveness for your past mistakes. We're not fighting any foreign enemies now, Jace, but guess what? We're fighting ourselves. Yeah. We're shooting each other on the but, our streets, but, and somebody said, it ain't happening. You're like... It's not happening. Well, but yeah. when you read when you read Romans five, you know true peace is when you can lay your head down on a pillow and think, "I'm forgiven. I have access to the Creator of the universe." That's Romans five says it. You've been given access, and if you die at any moment, you're perfectly going to be fine. Yet shall you live? Well, that would be ultimate peace. That's right. So whatever peace they're offering, 
it's not as it's not as good as this kind of peace. No. Same thing with joy, you know, because he went on in Romans five saying that we rejoice in our sufferings. Well, who does that? When we're suffering, the last thing we're doing is being joyful in that, right. especially in this for looking at it from a, a you know a country view. But we can do that because we know the same things. We're forgiven. We have hope of eternal life. We have access to the Creator. We have the opportunity to love. And e- even though we're suffering, miss me, I didn't want to go run a chainsaw the next day. I mean, I right. didn't want to do it. But I thought, they're way more shook up than I am over this. You know, we we had a, this is crazy, the, we had the hurricane hit on, was it Friday night? Yep. Well, we had a wedding at our place. Which we had all talked right. about on the podcast. I was going to ask you that because people are going to wonder. Remember you were talking about yeah. finding those coins. There was a wedding coming up. So d- w- There was so- a wedding. At our, you know, we have bed and breakfast there. And, and I, I don't know what's happened during the hurricanes, but everybody's going out there and staying. Well, I told Miss, I was like, call that wedding off because <laughs> they're not going to have power. I know that. Right. And I was like, it's going to be wet. It, there's already the drama of a wedding. And she's like, I tried. They want to have it. So they go out and have the wedding. When all the smoke cleared, I mean, they got got married. And the wind and the rain and no power, the (laughs) wedding went on. I wasn't there. I just thought, well, these people. By the way. The show is going. here's here's (laughs) Here's the biblical mask. Watch. You're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. You're like, boy, that is, that is guaranteed, redeemed. You say, under the control of the Spirit, you've clothed yourself. And look, you haven't even reached for your mask yet. You say, you clothe yourself with Jesus, the protection. Watch. Uh, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil. Put on the full armor of God. Way more there than the mask. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you have a helmet. I mean, <laughs> he, he gives you a helmet, Forget a about a mask. sword. <coughs> that's uh, a mask. A breastplate. Now, that's protection there. Al. Some that, iron that boots. Is. Let's, uh, let's take another break. Well, I was going to say after the wedding, I went out there the next day just to see that I was impressed that they did the wedding. So I pulled up, I was fixed to turn in. Well, there was a young girl just standing on the road, and I was like, no, what's all this about? Because I didn't see her truck. Well, I didn't see her truck because it was at the bottom of the ditch. <laughs> she oh. had, because she had got a little too far. You know, we have a levee in between the river and our house. I guess she was parking and. Her friend pulled up about the same time I did. And so when I got out, I said, what's going on here? Because here's this truck when I'm talking about buried, buried. And they had a basically the equivalent of a rope, and they were fixed to try to pull this out. I said, <laughs> let me just stop you right here. I said, that truck's not coming out of there with that rope because this levee, just the angle and it's yeah. wet and the rut's leading down. I said, you're going to need a wrecker. She said, well, i got one coming. And she said, do you own this place? And I said, yep. Well, when I said that, she just started trembling. And I was like, I said, what's wrong? She was like, I'm so sorry. And she started getting teared up. And I was like, I thought, now here's this girl. She's embarrassed that this has happened because I'm sure this this picture of this, somebody was taking a picture of this because it looked like, how in the world do you get that truck here? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? What were you thinking? All the things that crossed my mind. But I, I saw her, she was upset. I was like, I'm not worried about my yard. I said, you've obviously either had an accident or did something really dumb. I said, but I've stuck more vehicles in my life. <laughs> Things happen. It was a hurricane. You zig when you should have zag. I said, but I'm not worried about that. She's like, yeah, but it's going to cost so much to fix your yard. I was like, we have equipment. If you get that truck out of here, we're good. <laughs> I, was like, I don't want it to be there. And uh, then she just burst out into tears, just sobbing. She said, I've just had a horrible, crappy day. She said, at first I drove out here and left my keys. So she took her keys out, which I was thinking, 
You could have left those keys in there. <laughs> it ain't coming out That's of there. Exactly so right. that was mistake number one, but I didn't say that. She said, then I had a horrible argument with my husband because he won't come out here and help me pull it out. I said, I'm going to have to side with your husband on this one. <laughs> it ain't coming out of there. <laughs> I said, you now, this is the newlywed? This is the one? No, oh, okay. she was just at the <laughs> I was wedding. I say, we're off to a bad She was time. just at the wedding. And this, is after, this is day two. This is after the wedding. She's trying to get her truck. She yeah. left there, left the truck there. And uh, she just burst into tears, and I thought, you know, here we got opportunity here. I was like, people make mistakes. It's impossible for you to go through life and not make a mistake. There's another impossible. And I'm not yeah. going to beat you up over this, even though I own this. Am I uncomfortable that you tore up my yard? You know, maybe a little, but after I've seen you, I've done the same thing. I was like, it's going to be okay. I said, look, life is more, and I gave her a little Jesus speech. I was like, life is more about how you respond to things. You'll be better for this. It's okay. We've all done the same thing. I said, people say, how could you do that? They've done stupid stuff. Of course, I went back to the rock throwing. I was like, everybody loves throwing rocks at, at dumb stunts. I said, but I want you to know. I don't care that you're stuck here. I, it's no big deal. Let's get you out, get you on your way, and, and make you know decisions in life that are way more meaningful than what are we going to do about this vehicle. <laughs> well, to end up my little sermonette, Al, I've got three things that have to do with stand. Stand on. Stand on the gospel of Jesus. He died for you. He was buried and raised from the dead. Stand up. Just walk like Jesus did. And stand out. The, uh, the old Peter said, you'll kind of seem like a stranger and an alien while you're on the earth if you do this right. That, and then it comes down to don't ever back down, don't ever back up, and don't ever back off. Rise up, rise up, Jesus number one. He's the way, the truth, the life, the resurrection. The only way to go. There's liable to be people preaching. That's ah, that's, a, that's, hey. that's some alliteration going there. Well, it's out I'm of my Facebook. Hey, C plus, man, C plus. <laughs> so to, to illustrate what you just said, and, and you too, Jay, I had a really interesting conversation this past Sunday. There's a, a family that's moved here from New Jersey, and, and Dad knows them because they've been meeting over there where he's at, helping them out. And, it's, and they came during this pandemic, and... Super successful, got his own IT business, very smart man and family. And it was really interesting because he was like, I Did y'all have them over? Well, y'all didn't meet Sunday because of the storm. So yeah. we, that's the first time I met him. I was got here you. Sunday. And so he so he came up and we probably visited for twenty or thirty minutes. But it was something he said that was really interesting to what you were just saying a minute ago. He said, I, I all my life I've lived in a place where everybody's just angry and mean. And neighbors, it's like, don't mess up. Don't cross that line. Yeah. Don't, you know, just everything you were mentioning is just ready to pounce on mm -hmm. the one mistake you made. Rules and regulations. And then, of course, he's, they've been in this pandemic, and, they, and they've got one of those little, you know, dictatorial guys, you know, running their state. And he was like, you know, I, I found the show on Fox Nation, Dot Dot Dynasty, talking about, and I started watching this. And, man, finally some joy in my life. And he said, I really just started admiring your family. And then I found the podcast. And he was like, you know, I grew up Catholic, but I was never really very spiritual minded. And I started listening to you guys, and I was, and he was like, "Why are we in New Jersey?" <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "I always wanted to move to the South." He said, "So we just picked the whole thing up, you know, because their company was mobile, you know, because it's done by computer." He said, "We just moved down here," and he would tell me where he lived over in Monroe. And he said, "The first thing well, they've been here a week, and the hurricane, first hurricane hits, and a tree falls across his house and his office." And he said, you know, that's our whole business and everything. He was thinking, oh, have I made a mistake? You know, the next day, this crew I was talking about earlier from the church shows up. I don't know how they knew about him, I guess, because he's been meeting with y'all. Yep. And they show up over there, cut that tree off. And, of course, I saw them all hugging those guys, you know, Sunday. And I was like, he was like, his first week here, he saw what what being in our yeah. community means. Not, not church community and the yeah, other. We're, ha I, we're having that gr little group over for I know, supper that's this what week. They I'm, there, I've done a few events in New Jersey. There are great Jesus. Oh yeah. We're not just there. down in New Jersey, but, but I'm saying, I think that's what happens. You get, you don't see the forest for the trees and wherever your neighborhood is, it may be in Louisiana, maybe New Jersey, but the mean neighbor scenario. Oh, that, that is a reality. I mean, <laughs> they're everywhere. Cause that's why that girl was so terrified. She thought I was pulling up to get on her. I was pulling up just to, Console her, help her, right, I didn't, yeah. No, I didn't even know she was there. Oh, okay. I just 
I was like, what happened here? I thought it had just happened. She's like, no, that happened during the wedding. I was like, oh, wow. Because I was thinking, well, nobody, why are we waiting 24 hours <laughs> to get a wrecker? I mean, it's pretty obvious. And look, once the wrecker came, he's out in five minutes. I was like, see, you're just all worried about it. That, it never happened. We moved on. Yeah, there was a guy that was working on my house, and he backed too far. He had a big, heavy work truck, and he backed too far in my yard, and it was wet. And he got stuck in my front yard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our thing is manicured pretty good. But so he came out. He had to come in the walk of shame to ask if I'd pull him out, you know, with my truck. Yeah. I said, yeah. So I had a chain. We, I pulled him out. He's like, man, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll come back over and feel I said, no, you don't have to come back over here. I said, I can throw sand in them ruts. It's no big deal. It's just a rut. I mean, ruts happen all the time. But I could tell he looked at me like he was waiting for me to jump on him. Hey, you dog. And I was like, have to go it's just a couple it. of ruts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but, but that's the mentality. I think when you live it every day, what you were talking about earlier, if you're thinking with God, all things are possible. I mean, I'm saved. Death can't hold me mm-hmm. at all. And therefore, I have a God that only speaks truth. I, I'm good, you know. I, I'm not yeah. really having to worry about these day to day things. And so that, that's that would be my advice to all of you out there. And it, it, it happened for me with the pandemic. Whenever, obviously, people is depending on what your political ideology was, is whether you could get out and do stuff or not. And was you know you could see it clearly. So I was like, look, don't worry about all that. We, we've been faithful through the process. People in our family have had COVID. To people their credit, have, the energy people, the first group. I met all the all the energy crews that were putting the wires back up because I'd taken the trees off the power lines. That was a month ago, the first hurricane. And so I walked out. Somebody come up and knocked on my door. Mr. Robinson, yeah. He said, man, I got a big bunch of people out there, all the crew on these workmen. They want to meet you and all that and talk it over. I said, all right. So I go down there. So I meet them all. Where are you all from? Kentucky. They said, we came all the way from Kentucky clear these trees and work on our lines, the power, yeah. which we appreciate. So then they fixed it, got the power back on about a week. They were gone. Well, yesterday I, I looked outside. I saw all these energy trucks. Well, I walked down there. I said, I said, boys, we need to quit meeting like this. <laughs> I said, you know, what? A, a month ago y'all were here putting wires back up. I said, we, we, I'm getting tired of this. I said, where are y'all from? They said, where did you say? Missouri. They said, we're all from Missouri, Mr. Robinson. They said, how about some pictures? Yeah. So with both groups, you know, I'm standing up there, you know. <laughs> but, Phil, that's what these, these things do is when you have disasters and it brings people together. It does. does. And look, the only time I've ever said roll tide in my because I'm an LSU fan, right. is when there were five power trucks in front of me. We were going through the little loop de loops. You yeah. know, they were from Alabama. Yeah. Well, they recognized my truck. Yeah. So I pulled up there and I was so excited that they were there because I didn't have electricity. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. They came from Alabama here to help us. I mean, right. we're, we are bridging all gaps. <laughs> so you, he you he went, roll tide, and I went, roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> Get the lights on. <laughs> no power brings everybody together. Saban rules. <laughs> <laughs> No, we get these lights on, get back to Alabama, we're going to kick your butt <laughs> in a couple of years. <laughs> Not this year. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.